As the NFL free agency period is about to kick into high gear, Seattle Seahawks fans are eagerly awaiting the moves that will shape their team for the upcoming season. With strengths to build upon and areas for big improvement, the Seahawks offseason is the most crucial for maintaining their competitive edge. Welcome back to the channel, I'm Seahawks Area and today I dive into my personal Seattle Seahawks offseason wish list. If you like this video hit the thumbs up and hit the red subscribe button as well if you're new to the channel as well as follow my Instagram with the handle instagram.com slash seahawks.area for more of my Seattle Seahawks content. There will be two sections for this video. Number one, re-signings. Number two, signings from other teams and the whys obviously for both. So let's get started with the re-signings. Player one, defensive end Leonard Williams, three years, $42 million. Williams, who the Seattle Seahawks acquired from the New York Giants prior to the trade deadline back in October in exchange for a second and fifth round draft pick, entered the starting lineup right away and improved the trench performance of his new squad. In just 10 games in Seattle, he recorded 41 tackles, 4 sacks, and 9 TFLs, making history as the first player since 1930 to play in 18 regular season games. Despite the defense seemingly falling apart around him in the final stretch of the season, he lived up to expectations after the trade. Player 2, linebacker Jordan Brooks, 2 years, $28 million. At just 26 years old, Brooks has spent the last 3 seasons as one of the NFL's most prolific off-ball linebackers. Amassing 456 combined tackles, which ranks 6th among all defenders in the league since 2021. Despite playing only 35 out of 48 eligible linebackers and run stops during the previous season, he tied for the first in the same category during the 2022 season and finished 11th in his first full season as a starter in the same year. He was a consistent high performer moving sideline to sideline and getting downhill to make plays against the run. Player 3, linebacker Bobby Wagner, one year, $7 million. Wagner proved he still had plenty of life in him as he moved into ageless wonder zone. He became just the fourth player to surpass 100 tackles in the season 12 times since tackles were first recorded as a statistic. He led the league in tackle totals despite Seattle's difficulties in time of possession and getting off the field. But he wasn't accumulating stops for nothing. Out of 60 eligible linebackers, he had the ninth best average depth of tackle against the run with 2.6 yards. He was among the top 7 in run stops and run stop percentage despite only missing 7 tackle attempts during the season which further demonstrates his reliability in making tackles close to the line of scrimmage. Player 4, tight end Noah Fant, 2 years, $18 million. Fant wasn't always a non-factor in Seattle's passing game, despite what his reception statistics would have you believe, a victim of circumference. JSN's entrance to an already strong receiving corp, led by DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett, resulted in him seeing less opportunities but when quarterback Geno Smith did target the former first round choice, he finished ninth among tight ends with an average of 5.7 yards after the caps per reception. Only two drops and seven receptions that went for 20 yards or more, he caused a lot of damage with the football in his hands. Alright, now time for other player signings from other teams. So, player one, linebacker Patrick Queen, three years, $55 million. With an incredible season that included a career-high 133 combined tackles, 3.5 sacks, 6 quarterback hits, a forced fumble and an interception, and 9 TFLs, Patrick Queen earned his first Pro Bowl selection in 2023. He and Roquan Smith formed a formidable tandem for Mike McDonald's defense. However, it now appears likely that Patrick Queen will be elsewhere in 2024, and the Seattle Seahawks are one of the top teams that stands out as a potential suitor for the Pro Bowl linebacker, primarily because of his connection to new Seahawks head coach Mike McDonald. Player 2, Safety, Geno Stone, 2 years, $13 million. Earning high praise from Ravens general manager Eric DaCosta for being quote-unquote one of the best 7th round picks we have ever had. 
Stone overcame early career adversity to become an all-pro caliber free safety in Mike McDonald's scheme. In 2023, he started a career-high 11 games and led the NFL with 7 interceptions for Baltimore's top-ranked defense. Quarterbacks managed just 7.1 yards per reception and a 53.3 passer rating when targeting him, both top 5 marks for all qualified safeties. Though poor tackling was an issue as he had the third worst missed tackle rate among qualified safeties, Stone's best football at age 25 may still be ahead. With an affordable cost, reuniting with Mike McDonald in Seattle would benefit both player and team. Player 3 Edge rusher Jadavian Clowney, one year, $7 million. Clowney, who played with the Seahawks in 2019, may be a great fit if the Seahawks do decide to add a number of former Baltimore Raven players. Playing under Mike McDonald, Clowney enjoyed a breakout season in 2023, following a few disappointing years throughout his career. He completed 71 total pressures, 10 sacks, 51 rushes, Clowney would be a great third option in the edge rotation after Boye Mafe and Yushen Nwosu, and signing him wouldn't necessarily break the bank. Player 4, guard Dalton Risner, 1 year, $9 million. Let's say Damian Lewis is signing in, wouldn't necessarily be upset, he's a perfectly good, decent quality starter. But the Seahawks must strive for improved performance on all fronts because they have far too long settled for mediocre up front. Dalton Risner, who has often received higher pass protection ratings from PFF than Damian Lewis, is a possible left guard upgrade. To see the kind of improvement they desire, Seattle's front office must place a strong emphasis on offensive linemen who excel in pass blocking. And the final player, Player 5. Tackle Trent Brown, one year, five million dollars. Seattle's current right tackle Abe Lucas, who is largely dependent on his injured knee from last season, prevented him from playing in 11 games. Geno Smith's right flank turned into a blazing dumpster fire when Lucas was removed from the picture. The Seahawks might take out a policy here and sign the massive Trent Brown, in whom they have previously expressed interest in free agency. Brown could prove to be an improvement if right tackle Abraham Lucas fails once more. He had an 80.2 overall rating in 2023, finishing the season just outside of PFF's top 10 tackles and showing promise in both run and pass blocking. Plus, Abraham Lucas, when he was playing in Washington State for college, was a very rotational offensive lineman. He can play guard on left and right. He could play left tackle if needed. Not sure about center, but this would make sense in my book. And that will do it for today's video. So if you enjoyed, please like, comment, and subscribe if you're new to the channel. We are almost at 400 subscribers. A little help would be greatly appreciated. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Go Hawks!